this episode of As Yet Undecided has been brought to you by Mike's traitorous preference for Vegemite. How could you, Mike? <laughs> How could you? <laughs> well, look, it, it, it's cheaper than my Mike. It, it was like it was it was three dollars at Countdown, which is an Australian owned supermarket chain. Oh, progressives, I know. But honestly, Marmite comes from Australia. Why is it cheaper? You said Marmite comes from Australia. No, Vegemite... <laughs> Screw this. Vegemite... <laughs> Vegemite comes from Australia. Why is it cheaper? It's it's called logistics and supply chain. Okay. Oh, it's hell. I never knew that. Mm. Anyway... This is the As Yet Undecided podcast with me, Sophie, and... Mike! Welcome back! We've switched! Welcome back! Yay! We've switched names, actually. Because, yeah, um, yeah sorry about last week, it's called Assignments. Yes. And, um, and we are filming this a little bit early, because I have an assignment due tomorrow. But it's fine. Yeah, oh my goodness. We're recording this on a Wednesday instead of a Friday, because Friday's a good Friday, and... We would rather not ruin it. Yeah, I know. And, um... All good, G? No. What, no <laughs> what, what, what Sophie did is that she wanted to fist bump me, and I denied her flat. <laughs> the single tear has dripping, is dripping down from my right eye. Yeah, the same tear coming down from my eye with you talking about Vegemite. <laughs> but, how, but how's everything going, Sophie? Well, I'm afraid we are currently floating down to Queen Street <laughs> because it's raining again. Which cyclone are we talking about, Mike? Um, Cook, this time. Yes, well, first it's a Tasman storm, then we had another bout of rain, then now we have Cyclone Cook. Yeah, what well, well, was the Tasman storm, then you, then you had Debbie. 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 Yes, from, from Australia. Yeah. I'm surprised it's not Matilda. Oh, uh, well... <laughs> do, they, do they have Matilda? Yeah, well, by well, the way, it goes... it goes Alphabetical. It, yeah, it goes alphabetical. So, um... I, and then, insert porn joke here. Really? Be, yeah. Because of the whole Debbie thing. What's happened? Well, 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 well you can... You can associate any sort of town starting with the letter D and put it at the end of Debbie... Just like the porn movie Debbie Does Dallas. You kidding? Like Debbie Does Dobbo. Debbie <laughs> Does. Mm, Dunst- Dunstan. <laughs> yeah. Debbie Does Dunstan. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Does Dinsdale in Hamilton. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, what else? Okay, just. Okay, you can put out a list of D names in the comments, I suppose, if you, if you so wish. Yeah, but, you know, don't put D's nuts on there, because that would be hilarious. Debbie does D's nuts? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> who was... Actually, who was D's nuts? Because he did run for US presidential election, didn't he? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, the, ra- the rain is ruining everything. How are you, Mike? Uh, ruined. I feel ruined. <laughs> I felt spoilt, moulded by the rain. Oh, p- putting in the um, the fungi jokes in there, huh? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's so wet, fungi can swim in the air. So, are you secretly a mushroom? Uh, I don't know. I don't really have much room for these discussions these days. Uh, the only mushrooms that I want are... Uh, Ones that are eatable and toad off Super Mario. <laughs> True. Well, at least you can insert some naughty jokes, such as shiitake mushrooms. Aye. We can swear using mushrooms, of course. Yes. And, and what are the little ones called? Buttons. Buttons. They're delicious, raw. Really? Oh, they taste like Hinami. They, t- they do taste a little bit like a Vegemite, so... Yes. I do like eating them raw. And, and as a reference, even talking about Vegemite... For a little while now, and she's still OCD with the Vegemite jar. No, it's not obsessive compulsive. It's just, oh, styming. My aut- my autism is playing up, so I feel like spinning it in my hand, like a lock. 
and um, I find out t- tomorrow if I'm going for surgery next week or not. To get to make your eyes younger, isn't it? Yes, to to make my eyes yeah younger in both senses, either by Botox or by embryonic fluid. Yes, baby, baby, baby. Oh, great, my ears are great, crying. great. You've made my ears bleed twice in the last two podcasts. Well done. My ears are bleeding as well, okay? I, I should never have done this, sorry. But in, in, in saying that, how is the raffle going? We need more tickets, please. But we have hit our target, so that's Yay! Nice. We would like some pizza, though. Pizza! Oh, oh but what, what kind of pizza do you like? Uh, Hawaiian. Hawaiian. And some to lovers. Mm-hmm. How about you? Um, well, I never used to like Hawaiian when, when I was a kid. I never used to like it. Yeah, that's the pineapple, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the whole sweet and savoury. I'm like, uh, uh, But, um, yeah, I do like a high-quality vegetarian pizza. Which provider? Um, like the Hal Purgatory pizza. Oh, nice. Yeah, I do like their pizza quite a lot. Have you, have you tried Souls? Yes. Do you like them? Oh, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's not my favourite pizza. What's your favourite pizza? I'll, I'll, I'll just have to go for the... Make your own would be the favourite pizza. I made a pizza so hot once that it made me made me shed multiple tears. <laughs> you are quite the chef though, Mike, I have to admit. I think you're better at cooking than me. Ugh. Uh yeah, well, you can you, you can insert any sort of patriarchal joke in there. So like, cooks a woman, shifts a men. No. 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 <laughs> we're, we're in a post post modern society here. Post post. Yeah, post post modern. When are we going, when are we going to do the triple post post cubed? Ooh, good question. Maybe it'll be first past the post first. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry we're doing the um, voting puns here because I just the only class I had today was democratic participation. Very so, important, guys. Vote. <laughs> so, Vote. So it's been on my mind. It's been on my mind. Yeah. Talking. Your, your vote counts, people. Vote this year, please. Yeah. No. Yeah. November eight. Am I right? November the 8th, have they decided yet? No. No, I was talking about the US election from last year. Oh, yeah. November. Oh, sorry, it was November 9th. Sorry, it was November 9th. But my bad. Uh, yeah, it's going to be around about September 23rd at this stage. Oh, so like last time. Yeah. Oh, which means I get to vote on my birthday, more or less. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, well, my birthday's on September the 5th, so I might yeah. get my voting papers as a birthday present. And this is this will be your first election, is that correct? Um, depends how you define election. Oh yeah, yeah, but the, 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 the local ones don't count. Okay, so let me explain. I've done the flag referendum. I have voted on the mayor, plus the health board. Oh yeah. Um, I actually took time to actually do that, and this will be my first ever general election. Yes. Vote. Yes. And and, and and how and how is that going for you? How how was that? feeling going uh, well because you live I'm rather excited actually you live in a very non-contentious voting district I am a I do live in the act stronghold but I am not a, a supporter yes which means I'll probably have to be kicked out sooner or later <laughs> yes and I will not be telling you who I'm voting for by the way yeah well, 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 well nor am I but it's sort of like because of the uh, uh, the Ardern split to Mount Albert. Mm. It's sort of hard not to vote for Kay. It's sort of hard not to vote for Nikki Kay. Um. Especially with the whole um, breast cancer scare and... Breast cancer scare? Yeah. What did she what, what did she do? Well, she had breast cancer. She took time off. Oh, I remember now, yeah. Yeah. And then it was, it's just like... You, you, you almost think that no matter what, she's just going to get sympathy votes. Yeah, well, then again, do you really want a dying person to be representing you in Parliament? 
yeah, but but you know, coming back from cancer yes. and still being her her parliamentary duties, you kind of feel like you know she deserves the vote a little bit. She's determined, all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. From from what I know, she's very strong, hard, very opinionated, and you know, very hard working. That, that, that's from what I hear. Sounds like you. Ah, maybe not the hard working part, maybe not the opinionated part. <laughs> but very, <laughs> but I, 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 I always, I'm very modest. Like, I always say to people that I'm just a guy. <laughs> no, you're not a guy. What, yeah. a, what am I, Sophie? Well, the thing I, is, in order, to, in order to be a guy, you need to be named guy in the first place. Oh. You're a Mike. You're a Mike, not a guy. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay. I, I, I see what you're doing now. In, in, in psychological terms, she's trying to um, identify myself with personal factors. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, ultimately, if you critique it down and you do some research on it. People that use personal factors on a list are generally individualistic. Am I individualistic? Of course you are. Wow. Well, um, is, is that a good thing being individualistic? It, it makes you align with the social norms of the country. Oh really? Um, what I found out with me is that I'm, I'm more individualistic than collectivist yes. but... You're more collectivist than most Kiwis. Well, well, that too, but also I align my collectivist more positively mm. than my individualistic traits. I see. Yeah. Because you, like, yeah, you, cause you do, like, I am, blah, 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 and then you have to say if it's positive or a negative effect on yourself. Oh, I see. Yeah. Where did you take that test? Um, it's part of... Um, AUT's level 6 paper Individuals and Identities with Dr. J. Wood a little short Canadian guy who is hilarious Does he say eh often? Oh nah nah, he's 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 pretty much sort of amalgamated the um, Saskatchewan and the Kiwi accent So how long has he been in New Zealand for? About a decade Goodness, so he has a native Indigenous American and the Kiwi accent mixed up together. Yeah. What the hell? What does, does that sound like? <laughs> yeah, it's alright. Yeah, because he, he specialises in South psychology. How does he pick up the Kiwi accent? I thought... Well, he's been here for a decade. Well, how old is he? Well, he's in his late 30s. Late 30s, which means he, he would have come here in his late 20s. Most people have their accents set by their late teens. Yeah, but, but generally... You, you, you adapt to your surroundings so the society makes makes you feel more comfortable. Oh, wow. He must sound pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. Yes, most of my lecturers are pretty cool. Mm. So I've got Jay Camille, who deals in um, discrimination. Yeah. And Kate, who deals in politics. Oh. Yeah, because there's no, um, you can't, there is no politics program oh. at AUT, but there's politics papers. Oh. And she's, she's one of the head teachers for it. Nice. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I have. Pretty damn cool teachers. Yeah. Should I, um, should I talk about my teachers, my students? No, well, you, by, by all means, by all means. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're pretty cool, but um, uh, everyone would agree um, Sean is one of the more unusual teachers as, um, of economics. Yeah. If you take if you take a business paper, you'll probably encounter Sean sooner or later, and he's quite a character. Does he um, deal with micro or macro? Um, economics, he, economic principles, which means he does both. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's just, he, he's, he is the king of comebacks. Okay. Very sassy. Very sassy. Yes. Very Sasha Fierce. Yes. And, um, he, well, he's also very, he's, he makes a lot of jokes. He isn't really afraid of us, um, to talk, oh, he's also giving us, he, he, he keeps on giving us life advice as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, for example, the other day he taught us how to cheat, how to have, how to take a Russian jewel. 
So, so what, what what are your other teachers like? Uh, they are they are they are right. Uh, Suzanne, she she knows what she's talking about, but she does talk in a little, little bit of monotone. Yeah. Then we have Guy Charlton. He's new. Yes. He was in a car accident once upon a time back in back in America. He's he's from America, by the way. And now he can't remember faces. Oh. He has a legit condition in which he cannot remember faces. As it turns out, he ha- he had that throughout his life, even before the car accident. I think it's just that I think the car accident made it worse or something. Yeah, it, well, it could have been um, part of the oh um, prefrontal cortex. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he has a problem with that. If you want to read more about it, I am um, Oliver Sacks. He wrote a he wrote a, a series of short short stories about his cases, and the man who mistook his wife for a hat. Oh yes. The man who mistook his wife for a hat. One of the, that's the, that's the name of the story, which is also the title of the anthropology of of the book. No, the title of the anthropology, and it's so interesting. It deals with that exact condition of you, you, the fact that you can't remember faces. <laughs> It's absolutely freaky, actually, because that means that everyone is a stranger unless you have some sort of distinctive uh, trait. So, so, for example, the guy in that book, I think he identifies his wife by his vo- by her voice. Yeah, well, yeah, it would either have to, yeah, it would have to be voice or it would have to be touch. Voice? Or, no, or even smell. But I don't think smell would be, would be lesser on the scent scale. And hear. He sometimes identifies the men by their beards. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not the eyes or the face or the overall face, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but in saying that, um, I got told to read something very old. And in class, do you want to guess what it is? The self? No, no, no. Well, I've got to read that too. That's part of my um, self-psychology book. But I also got to have to read the Communist Manifesto. By Marx. Yes. Oh, yes. That, the Communist Manifesto actually um, influenced a lot of people, actually. Uh, let's see. Lenin, Lenin took it seriously. So did Mao Zedong. Yes. But Stalin, not too sure if he did. I think he basically rode... I think it was there for the power. Yeah. A- a- and as my teacher said this morning, Stalin was a straight-up thug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I don't think Stalin had any ideology. He just wants power, you know. Yeah. Which is which is interesting. Just like the uh, the old Mexican proverb. What's that? First you get the money. <laughs> no, 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 no. Then you get the power. That's Colombian. <laughs> Scarface reference. First you get the first you get the money. Mm. Then you get the power. Then you get the women. <laughs> Brilliant film. That yeah. one. That's all right, my little cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to my Ooh. little friends. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just break copyright? No, no, no. And funny enough, when we um, talk, when when we talked about the wrestling for the Mike's birthday podcast, yes. they actually ripped off Scarface in one of the characters. Really, his name was Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon. <laughs> what? So Scarface. Yeah. So he, like, like he used to rock up in his leopard print car with the white in a little well, white suit, and he used to talk in a Colombian fake Colombian accent. But Scarface's accent was horrendous. Yeah, no. Ugh. But oh uh, no, actually, actually, this podcast is uh, brought to you by fake recordings. <laughs> no, it's not. I thought, <laughs> not. I thought it was brought to you by cocaine. Ah, talking the, about talking about cocaine. Um, I was reading. I mean, we we, just, we went totally off plan here, but that's probably good because we can save this plan for when Euro comes. No, oh, of course. Yeah. Um, talking about cocaine. The other day, I was actually reading the book Blitzed. Okay. It's a really good book, guys. It's it was actually written. I think it was released last year. They were talking about it on RNZ National. Uh, I think was it was it Morning Report? No. I don't know. I can't remember. No, it's not morning report. It's not news. But but anyway, Blitz was written by this German uh, and it was about the Nazis' drug habits. 
So what happened was that this guy was um, talking with his friend in a pub, as Germans do. And the friend mentioned how uh, the Nazis took a lot of drugs, especially, meth- especially methamphetamine. Okay. Co- talking about that, methamphetamine and cocaine are the same class of drugs, right? They're amphetamines. Yeah, but, but but before that, we just want to mention that this podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. No! <laughs> Mike, I shall have to choke you. I absolutely <laughs> hate that ad now. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. well, well, I think Squarespace has joined the fray. <laughs> Our recommended book for this week is Blitzed. Yes. <laughs> yes, you're right. It is the same class, but it has two different actions. Okay, you have to explain it to us. Oh, by the oh, by the way, we were not we are not going to tell you how you're going to make meth nor <laughs> cocaine. Okay, we are not Walter White. So, m- m- meth and cocaine mm. work. You produce the same chemical, but they're doing it in two different ways. So what is the chemical, and how are they producing it? It is dopamine. Yes. And the it, happy, the happy one. Yes, and um, I'm not sure which one works as which, but which one? One is a antagonist, mm-hmm. and which one? And one is an agonist. Okay, um, I can't. I don't know what you're talking about, but apparently methamphetamine works in the way that it releases the dopamine from the neuron, the neuron cells. Neurons? Neurons? Neurons. Yeah, neurons. And it prevents reabsorption. Does that make it an yes. antagonist or agonist then? Um, yeah, so therefore it is a antagonist. So methamphetamine are antagonists, which means they release the dopamine from the neurons and it prevents its reabsorption. Yes. Okay, and that's bas- and once the dopamine is floating around in your head, it basically interacts with the ne- other neurons. Yes. And it gives you the happy, buzzy feeling. Yes. So how does cocaine work then? Cocaine is works the same, mm-hmm. but it's just an oversupply. So it makes... Makes dopamine. It makes dopamine. And then the dopamine floats around, it still gets absorbed. It still gets absorbed, yes. but there's still that excess. I see. Yeah. And that's what, and um, I've heard that ADHD is caused by the lack of dopamine, aka the lack of motivation to finish tasks, which is why they give an- amphetamines to people with ADHD, and that's why methamphetamine is technically a good drug for AD- for people who need drugs for ADHD, actually. Yes. Um, yeah, methamphetamine is a bit too strong, though, for most cases. Yes. Um, there's a whole bunch of new research that is just starting a new bunch of case studies mm-hmm. in response to in response to these claims but um the ethics behind that is that stringent stringent it'll take about a decade just to get the all clear to use it for research yes medical cannabis that's also quite interesting as well yes yeah technically there's nothing in medical cannabis that actually makes you high because they remove it. That's the the stuff of the cannabis that makes you high is removed. Yes. It's the other things. Uh, um. What are the other things in the in the cannabis that actually is the therapeutic bit? Um, I it's it's they take out the THC. Yes. Which is the chemical that gives you the buzz. The buzz. Um, but um, I think it's CHT. CHT. Yes. That is apparently very good for epilepsy. Yes. Ridiculously good. As in, um, you want, as in, you'll probably only suffer a mild case of epilepsy once a month if you take medical cannabis. Yes, it, 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 it all comes down to just the difference in strain. Yes. That's all it comes down to. Um, so, yeah, it's basically GM. Yes. Genetic modification. But uh, n- not in the lab. It's just um, breeding. Yes. That's all it is. So that means that breeding is just really slow and inefficient GM. Correct. Oh, I see. Yeah. Which is why it's actually quite funny when I see that, oh, everything's, oh, it's just GM free. And then they actually own a little tiny white dog. Yeah. It's like your dog is GM'd. Why don't you like GM food? Yeah, well, yeah, but, but yeah, the, they, people like that think it's okay on, on on someone else's experience, but if it, if it involves them directly, yeah, then no. Uh, NIMBY, isn't it? Yes. 
Not in my backyard. Yeah, not in my backyard. Yeah. Anyway, back to Blitz. <laughs> so, um, if you're wondering how, why on earth the Nazis are crazy, it's because A, uh, most of them are psychopaths, and B, most of them are taking uh, methamphetamine. In fact, the whole Germany was taking, pretty much the whole of Germany was taking methamphetamine back in the, about the 1920s during the Weimar Republic. And, and that was due to Co- the... No, it was actually cocaine. They were initially taking cocaine during the Weimar Republic. Then the Nazis banned cocaine, saying that it's a Jewish drug. Okay. Then they, then they started producing methamphetamine because they needed the German people to be strong. And they initially thought that methamphetamine was pretty cool because it prevented people from sleeping and got to them all buzzed up and made them work harder. Yeah. Then um, Hitler, being the hypocrite he is, he started taking harder and harder drugs. Towards the end, he was even taking cocaine. Um, I, yeah. was, I was watching a video yesterday about Mein Kampf. Yeah? About where the royalties go. Where do they go? The, the, there's currently three different makers of the book. Yes. And they all donate it to charity. Like, anti- like semitic semi- yeah. charity, like, against Nazism. Yes. Yeah. But there was a, f- there, there was a whole bunch of hoopla pla um, three decades ago about the allocation of those royalties. Really? Yeah. Because um, they didn't donate because they felt that there was a a, a non- anti-Semitic charity to give to properly. Oh. W- without some sort of corrupt- corruption. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, which is understandable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wow. so, 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 so which charities are they donated to now? Um, I'm not too sure, but um, look, look on the video today I found out. Okay. On the Mind Kampf box. Yeah. And, and so, I think it's already been released now, but um, recently there's been this huge... Scholar, the scholarly edition of Mein Kampf. So they basically have um, half. So half of the book is Mein Kampf, and half of it's annotations on the sides. Yeah. And the annotations basically show why not, why Hitler was crazy. Yeah, th- th- that's probably the reasons why. If I wanted to buy that book, I would just want to buy that book just because of that. Yeah, it's as a psychology as a psychological study of psychosis. Yeah. Yeah. So like um, that book, I had Divine Comedy. I had the art of war. Yeah. You know those those sort of books. Yes. Yeah. So what do you think about the Machiavelli's Prince? <laughs> good, very good book. Yeah. Do you take it seriously? Ah, uh, sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. You're not supposed to, you know that. Yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to, but sometimes you rethink, re- rethink some of the ideologies in that book, kind of like 1984. Yeah. Well, the thing is, oh, true that you probably learned a few things from it, but. Okay, guys, heads up. Machiavelli was a Republican. He wrote, <laughs> he wrote the Prince to show how ridiculous rawism is. But it's, he wrote it so well, people took it seriously. And then he's like, "No, don't do that. You're supposed to read the book thinking, well, rawism is silly." Yeah, it's kind of backfired. But like the Merchant of Venice by um by Shakespeare, actually, I think he wrote the Merchant of Venice as a satire. Against um, the anti-Semitism in um, English society. Okay. That's how I read it. Which is why you have the huge disjoint between the comedy and the tragedy. Because really the joke, re- because really the joke wasn't on um, Shylock. It was actually on the English characters. Oh. And, 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 the, and the audience. The joke is on the audience. But it probably took them about 400 years to work that out. Yes, and considering that I didn't study the Merchant of Venice. I studied the Merchant of Venice extensively during year 13. Yeah. I think it was a satire on English society. Technically, I did Othello twice. Yeah. Which, which was hilarious. But the fellow's cool, though. I, did, I studied the fellow too in year 12. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did it twice in year 12. Yeah. Because I um, changed schools in year 12. So it went, well, went from Othello to doing Othello. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So it's just like... Oh, I've already done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them all. Yeah. <laughs> That's a legit quote from um, the Othello, actually. Yeah. Honestly, that's another interesting study in um, racism, actually. Actually, in saying that, what's your favourite Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's play? 
I don't know actually, not too sure yet. Okay. Um, they're, they're all, the, most of them are pretty damn good. Yeah. Apart from Titus Dronicus, which was basically nothing more than an excuse for bloodbath. Yeah. But then again, it was Shakespeare's first ever tragedy, and he wrote it to be a bloodbath. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I always think between uh, Macbeth and Othello. Mm. Oh, more Macbeth is still pretty good as well. It's, um, it's the study of power, isn't it? It's just power. Yeah. And, uh, hey, who doesn't like Hamlet? Oh, yes, to be or not to be, that is the question. Yeah, especially when you've got, you know, the Disney adaptation. Come on. Yes. <laughs> you can't complain with the Lion King. Ah, Sabinia! Please don't cite me on this. Yeah, um, and they're making a live-action version. They already have made a musical version? Yeah, but they're making a live-action movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, it won't be, because it'll be completely CGI'd. Yes. Um, I don't recall um, lines talking. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so, like, the Jungle Book, but with no actual human. With no human. Okay. Yeah. They did quite a good job with the Jungle Book, actually, the latest version. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this year they're going to release... Another, Universal's going to release Jungle Book as well, right? That's right. Which is which is why I got so confused. And this year I thought, hey, Ben Dad Cumberbatch is playing... Um, What's that tiger called? Sheree Carr and the Disney version. No, 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 it's the other version. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. We'll call it there. Um, yeah. you, you can contact us on asyetundecided at gmail.com or AYU podcast on most social media platforms. Sophie? I am Sophie9709 on most social media platforms apart from Instagram. And, and and speaking of fake Russian people, you can contact me, the Manus, on all platforms. It's T H E M A A N U S. I hope you had a fantastic Easter, um, despite the rain. Don't kill yourself with chocolate, will ya? Yeah, just um, get get that blood sugar check after. Yes. All right. <laughs> Have a good week, guys. Bye. Don't get in trouble.